Hi guys, so here I am, as promised, on the back of my boat for the second half of my video on automatic watering systems. And back home, 200 miles away, my vegetables in their containers are being watered in this beautiful summer sunshine. And that's because I have an automatic watering system. Now on the first part of the video, I showed you the controller. And that was the piece of equipment that went onto the tap that allowed you to set the times you wanted the watering system to come on and off. <clears throat> and as I said on the other video, I normally set it for twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, for about 45 minutes. Now, obviously we then have to have from that controller a series of hoses that deliver the water to our individual vegetable plants. And the hose starts off um, as a large size of hose. This is a, a half inch or three eighths of an inch possibly in diameter. Um, in metric that's probably uh, 10 mil inside diameter. Okay, and this is the large hose. Now you will find that you need a barbed end connector to fit on there that will then fit on the bottom of your watering system. Now most of the people who supply these watering systems will supply you with what is called a low pressure valve. Now that is a, a piece of equipment that is about that long, about three inches or about ten centimeters, eight centimeters long and it's cylindrical in shape and it fits with a barb connector in there in the end of your first piece of tube and then screws onto the end of your controller. Now I don't use one of those and there's three reasons why I don't use one of those. One, they're very expensive. They're somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds or 15 to 20 dollars if you're on the other side of the pond. And the second reason is that they do what they say. They lower the pressure of the water, so it doesn't matter how hard, but much you turn the tap on, the, you know, connected to the other end of your controller, how much you turn that on the mains water tap, the pressure will be reduced and lowered to a given pressure inside this tube and all the other tubing. Now I find if you're doing a long run all the way down your garden, and lots of branches coming off of it, the pressure that that valve allows you is too low. By the time you get down to the end of your garden, there's no water coming out of the last um, watering spout to the last of your vegetables. And in fact, it happens a bit earlier up than that if you've got you know, any decent sized garden. So I don't bother with one of those. The third reason I don't bother with one of those is I had one and I put it on and I set my timer for the first time and I was going about my business in my house and suddenly I thought the house was going to come down. And what it was was that the valve inside the timer starts, inside the reducer, um, the actual part that reduces the pressure inside this device, vibrates up and down. and it resonated through all the pipework in the house and I thought somebody was knocking the house down. It's certainly something I couldn't live with. Uh, it might not happen to you, I don't know. Um, but it did to me and I tried it many different ways and I couldn't resolve the problem. So I gave up with one of those. But the major reason I don't use one is that I find that the pressure um, is not sufficient that is delivered from that. So what I do instead because I want a high pressure, um, I make sure that I use on all the connectors that go on this thicker hose, I make sure that when I push the connectors in, so you can have elbow connectors that can change the direction, you, they're just plastic elbows um, shaped 90 degrees, so you can change the direction of your hose through 90 degrees. I make sure that when I put them in place they just slip straight in, no problem at all really. Um, that's where with high pressure they would pop apart. Okay, well what I use to solve that problem is a simple what we call a Jubilee clip. 
okay now you can purchase these from any hardware store and they are basically a metal band that when you wind the the lever here um, they wind up and they tighten and I just put those up. make sure you always put them on before you put your connector in so slide them down the tube put your connector on slide it back up and then tighten it up tight over the connector they come in various sizes so make sure you choose a size that you know will tighten down make sure that's nice and tight and then you won't have any pressure issues whatsoever okay so this first large tube we take from the controller um, with a, a screw-in barbed connector that you can purchase um, you just have to have a look around in your garden center or your hardware store and find a barbed connector that will push in there and will fit whatever end you've got on your controller there's all sorts of ways that these controllers terminate and you're just going to have to look at your controller and be sensible about it and wander up and down the aisles until you find something that matches you might even find that you have to work out several different bits that if I mean mine has got um, has got a short length of hose uh, because it's got a female um, quick release connection um, and then a short piece of hose with another female quick release connection because what I found was I could only find at the time a barbed connector that then had a, a quick release coming out the other end of it so I just push mine into the female and I'm connected up I can then click it out and I'm disconnected if I want to use the tap for filling up a watering can say if I want to put some fertilizer on the garden then I'm going to want to disconnect this quite easily I don't want it to be a permanent fixture that I can't disconnect and on those on the controller on the timer there's always a way of being able to turn the the dial so as it goes to on which means you've got a constant flow so you just clip this off however you've managed to to make a quick release system like I said I'm not going to go into it because it depends on what's available at your hardware centre and which timer you choose and how the timer terminates but you just release whatever you've managed to put together put your watering can underneath and there's always a position that says on on your timer click it to that and the valve inside the timer will open and you can fill up your watering can and then put it back to your twice a day 6am 6 6pm 6 or whatever it's set to and then obviously remember to put this back on it has been done by me in a hurry filling up watering cans put the timer back right but then not connected the hose back up and wondered why in a couple of days my vegetables were looking a bit sick so <clears throat> when that's connected up to your timer then obviously the, the thick hose goes away and what you want to do is you want to make sure that the majority of your distances that are run to your containers are done in the long in the thick in the wide diameter hose the reason for that of course is that the wider the diameter of the hose the less the pressure drop over distance so the less pressure you're going to need from the tap to deliver your water okay the the, the thin hose the second type of hose which is the delivery hose is only this thick if you use that for long runs then you're going to find that your pressure drop is enormous and you're not going to, however much you turn your tap on, you're not going to be able to get the desired pressure to get any water to come out of the last few nozzles. So always use the wider diameter hose for your long distances. Only terminate at your containers with this um, thin hose and then obviously the delivery nozzles. So in the third part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how I then um, terminate the large hose. Obviously it's got to be terminated, hasn't it? Um, because otherwise when you turn the water on, you know every single, every single leg that you, you push out over your garden has got to be terminated because otherwise when you turn the water on, however many of these you've got attached to it, it's just going to pour out the end of there. Yeah? Okay, so I'll show you how we're going to terminate that and how we attach our final delivery system to this main hose. So thanks for watching and I'll be back in a moment with part three.